Following the unwritten rules of the channel, this video starts with a big box. I'm excited to see what's inside, but I also have mixed feelings, since I'm worried that the precious item inside might have been damaged. As usual, on the Dutch version of eBay, the seller was vague about the way he packed, in this case, a monitor. Probably from the top you can already recognize what kind of monitor this is. Yes, this is a Commodore 1701 monitor. I think one of the most sought after Commodore monitors. They are not necessarily rare, but these days can cost you top dollar. I plugged the monitor in to see if it still worked. I did not really hear high voltage and the image did not get brighter as I twisted the brightness knob, which worries me if it survived its trip. I managed to get this monitor for a decent price because I bought it as part of a lot, with other items included. The 1701 was hiding in the last few pictures and judging by the large amount of Commodore 64 sold on the Dutch version of eBay, I expect that other collectors just looked at the first pictures. The lot came with a data set, a lovely 1541 disk drive, and a Commodore 64 computer. And this old box with a bunch of adapters. We will take a look at those a bit later. Before we see if the 1701 works, I want to test the C64. I removed the rubber feet because they had turned sticky and screwed open the computer. Nice, the board looks very clean. This is a revision 250425 motherboard and I noticed that this fuse looked a bit rusted, so I replaced that with a new one. I always try to keep a couple of those lying around. Then I plugged in a video cable and connected that to my little CRT monitor. Connected it to my power supply. I forgot if the computer came with one, but I always use my modern day replacement power supply. Turning the computer on, no boot screen. So let's walk through some basic troubleshooting steps, and I mean the real basic ones. I pressed down on all the chips to make sure they were making good contact with the socket. Judging by the sound, I think this might be promising, as I definitely heard some chips that were not connected well. Attempt 2. No signal yet. While the machine was on, I felt around to see if any chips were getting particularly hot. Then I turned it off and used my magic liquid contact cleaner to see if we can maybe remove some oxidation. And lo and behold, I noticed that when I wiggled the video connector, I saw a blue screen. Yes, the machine booted. Apologies by the way for the weirdly synced camera, that was my ZV-1 I still have to get used to. I want to add some heat sinks to this Commodore 64, to hopefully lengthen the lifespan of the components in it, since they tend to fall victim to overheating. So I took a picture of the chips for if I have to reference them. I wonder what was the cause for it to boot again. I know that some VIC-20s need some time to boot again, so maybe this Commodore 64 was also taking its time after a long sleep. Or did pushing the chips in the sockets do it? Also I fear that the video cable might be a bit dodgy. Believe it or not, but that is the only Commodore 64 video cable I have at this moment, which is crazy since I have like 10 Commodore 64s in my collection, not counting the 23 motherboards in various states of disrepair of course. While applying the heat sinks, I noticed that the edge connectors were a bit dirty, so I removed the keyboard and cleaned those with a toothbrush and some alcohol. Moving on to the 1701, that also needed a bit of a scrub. I used some window cleaner to clean away a couple spots on the top cover. cleaned the rear panel and some weird spots on the front. The seller wrote me after sending it to the post, watch out, the contents might be a bit sticky because my hands were dirty while packaging. That was probably the weirdest message I have got yet. Why wouldn't the seller just wash their hands before packing the items? Also taking into account that I paid quite some money for this stuff. It cleaned away pretty well and I think it was a sort of oil of some kind. Well, at least I hope. The 1541 was also dirty. 
Also, am I the only one that notices this weird sound you can make if you move your hands over the air vents of this drive? A detail I liked about this drive was that it came with the original head protector. I believe you can even buy reproductions of those these days. The drive cleaned up very nicely. I will see if it works in another video. I will be using my SD to IEC in this video. Then that box filled with adapters. This box had an RS-232 connector. On the inside of the metal plate was nice handwriting. Googling one of the chips shows me that it can be used to interface data terminal equipment with data communications equipment in conformance with the specifications of E. IA standard number EIA232D. As a retro amateur, I then wonder if the EIA232D is referring to RS232. I suspect this to have a sort of same application or to connect the box to the Commodore 64. A couple of cables. This is interesting because this piece of paper references Viditel something I want to talk about in a future video. A big prototyping board with a bunch of chips, I believe this is all sort of networking stuff, which reminded me of a museum I recently visited. The Tyler's Museum in Harlem, where a whole bunch of interesting stuff can be found, like these old phones from the late 1800s. More old measuring tools. They also had a nice art collection. I really like this room, which really is the eye catcher of the whole museum. But I think I found this case filled with old telegraphing cables the most interesting. Sadly, the museum has most of its items in cases that have no lighting, which look nice and old, but due to the reflection sometimes makes it hard to actually see the items inside. Very cool cables though. Moving back from ancient tech to retro tech, I found that connecting a Commodore 64 to the monitor showed that it still worked. I was so relieved. I hooked up my SD to IEC and played some SID tunes. Got to say that the 1701 really looks nice with the same design language as the Commodore 64. I bet that's why everybody wants it. Booting up the browser tool and loading Ultima and Mission Impossible. I won't bother you with my bad gameplay, well not in this video. You will probably see me playing your game badly on this monitor in a future video. Anyways, as always I'm very happy with this 1701 and the whole set of lovely Commodore 64 stuff. Thanks for watching, here's some cheap 2000 TV show action and now Blue.